So the PlayStation 5 is capped at only 32 gigabits per second, according to Vincent Tio on HDTV test, because he used an AVR, which has been reported by literally a vast majority of AV publications as being buggy and glitchy and having issues with the chip. And really, it's not a reliable way of testing a next generation console. Yeah, according to Vincent Tio, again, a guy who didn't build the PlayStation 5, a guy who didn't reach out to Sony, Sony is capped at 32 gigabits per second. Never mind the fact that PlayStation hasn't even done the VRR patch yet, which is made for the performance mode, which likely is when you'd see the performance mode optimization happen. Never mind the fact that 8K resolution is rumored to come, and they haven't specified whether it would be 8K uncompressed in any aspect, because if they do any kind of uncompressed 8K, whether it's through streaming or allowing you to use a media stick or something like that, I don't know. We don't know. They haven't said yet. Well, guess what? You will basically be immediately wrong because there's no way to do uncompressed 8K without 40 gigabits per second, without something more than the 32 that you're claiming. And the reality is these are preliminary findings, guys. Vincent Tio, like I said, is a genius at YouTube. He's doing this for clicks. He's doing this to try to be the first on YouTube with something different about the PlayStation 5. But the reality is these are preliminary results. So let's talk about his, his testing here, okay? So in 4K 60 mode, we see this chart up where he has BT 2020, 12-bit color, HDR10. Okay, then when he snaps into the performance mode, he now sees 8-bit color. That immediately should be a red flag to everybody who knows anything about a television. You cannot have 8-bit color in HDR10. HDR10 stands for 10-bit color at the end, and to have 8-bit just kind of defeats it all together. It's extraordinarily compressed fake HDR, and at that point, that is proof that there is something wrong here, a de-optimization of sorts, because you cannot have less color than what the standard is pushing out. I mean, you can. It's fake. It's, that's why it's wrapped in a BT2020 container. It's compressed 8 bits, but the reality is that's de-optimized. That's not real HDR. Also, like I so generously mentioned in the beginning of this video, you don't have the VRR mode put in already. So again, when the performance mode is in the console, maybe start testing performance mode. Let me tell you what real experts do. Go watch the guys over at Digital Foundry test a bunch of games, not just one game like Devil May Cry, but a bunch of different games, pull a bunch of data from those games, pull it together into one final preliminary, keyword there, preliminary result and then provide disclaimers that it's not over yet. There is still optimization happened to the console and it still has room for growth. See, that's what a real responsible professional would do. But Vincent's not a real, prof real professional or responsible AV source of information. What, what he's doing is trying to damage control the irrefutable fact that the LG C10 is a downgraded LG C9. From day one, if you read through all of his thumbnails, he even has one that says never in doubt. Because at the end of the day, he wants to say, I was never worried. It was never a problem that LG downgraded the C10. That is his message, and it has been from day one. That is why he has not talked about the DTS encoders being ripped out as a massive downgrade and huge problem. And that is exactly why at every turn, he tries so desperately to tell every C10 owner that it is okay. So let me go ahead and do something I definitely hate doing on this channel. Let's play devil's advocate. Let's say, Vincent, you're 100% correct. As much as that stings to say, let's say you're 100% correct. Will you then start addressing the fact that it's a downgraded C9? Will you then tell people to wait for 20 21, when you can buy a real HDMI 2.1 TV for devices like the NVIDIA graphics cards, which, spoiler alert, the LG C10 advertised to a whole demographic of gamer and has been proven to underperform with the LG C10 hitting that ceiling because it can't hit chroma sampling 444, 12-bit color, with 
again your 4K resolution at 120 hertz? Can, can we then stand behind making sure that going forward we're being more responsible about the information we're putting out so we don't inspire a bunch of clickbaity videos about how PlayStation 5's inferior HDMI 2.1 bandwidth is maybe going to be a problem for some people. I mean, because this is what you're doing. You're creating a problem that never was there in the first place because, truth be told, you wanted to damage control one product. But come on, we all know next year when the C1 comes out, Vincent's going to jo jump for joy. The C1 has 48 gigabits per second, ladies and gentlemen. It is the greatest OLED to ever exist. Buy it because that's what he does every year. Go look at the history of his channel. Go look at every OLED video he's ever done. That's what he's done. I don't care what you guys will say. I don't care how you try to slice it. That's what he's doing. And when I have been saying what I have been saying for the longest time, he tries to throw curveballs in there and then tries to favor Panasonic a little more to try to ease out the pressure of being called what he is, an LG shill. It's not an attack. It's not a personal attack. It is calling into question his character based off of his behavior, based off of his track record, based off of what he's done in the past. Who here that watches HDTV tests regularly remembers when he said he's been overlooked and neglected and doesn't get invited to pre-CES briefings and events because he's an unbiased reviewer and, and they don't want to send him review samples because this kind of review style doesn't lend itself to giving them a review that's glowing like some other YouTubers. Like, that's the kind of lie that he told. Who remembers when he tried to then pretend like he was struggling so much back at the time, like he wasn't getting TV sent to him by Crampton and more, and that he needed to open up a Patreon so people can help him with the cost of these TVs. I remember, and the, the reasons like this are why I make videos about HDTV tests to warn people. Because I see that he is a shark trying to harm people. He is trying to line his own pockets. It's all about financial gain. It's go look at my channel and go look at literally every other AV guy. I'm the only person out here starting fundraisers because I actually care about animals and things other than myself. I'm the only AV YouTuber trying to respond to every single comment. I'm the only AV YouTuber that's passionately fussing and cussing and getting riled up when people get screwed out of their money because I'm a real person, ladies and gentlemen. I care, and this affects me. I hate seeing people rush to put out information that can harm other people, and that's what Vincent is doing. That is what he's always done, and it's no surprise to me. So I will say this. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are far from optimized. They just came out. I can't believe I have to say this, but any result that you're going to see on the internet right now about these consoles are preliminary right now. Until Sony officially confirms there is a ceiling for the PlayStation 5 at 32 gigabits per second and it can go no higher, you don't have official confirmation, especially because at this point in time, the variable refresh rate hasn't even been added into the console, as so generously pointed out by the true experts at Digital Foundry. I want to thank you guys for watching the number one brand in honesty. If you believe HDTV test, go for it. Be a fool. Do what you want to do. But I say get official confirmation before you start making videos. That's the only thing I'll say to guys like Rich over at uh, Review Tech USA and other people like that who are rushing for clickbaity titles to get that ad revenue. Because Lord knows the dollar makes everybody go crazy here on this platform. But I try to be different. And if you appreciate that, smack a like on this video and let's push for more responsible conversation around these machines. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later.